What's up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, I am going through some volume building. So the last one guys, I didn't do a voiceover. This time I am going to do a voiceover and I'll see which one you guys like more. So leave some feedback in the comments section on what you would rather me do, what you prefer, if you just like the raw train clips or if I should, if I should mix it up. Uh, that said, in this session, I was building into some volume work. So if you guys watched the last session, you probably noticed I was doing full cleans. I was doing high rep deep squats. I was doing high rep calf raises. And the reason why is because I'm a couple months out from dunk camp and I really haven't done much in the way of heavy, heavy loading. And the reason why is because I wanted to jump high right now. I, I didn't really want to have fatigue. I didn't want to have things limiting me whenever I was actually on the court. And when I tend to push up my weight room volume, my vertical drops a lot. Part of that is that I'm a one foot jumper and one foot jumpers are a little bit more sensitive to fatigue. And that is why I don't like to hammer the weight room as much as I used to. Another thing you guys have to remember is that I have been training for I don't know, since I was 13 and I've been hammering the weight room since I was 13. Good or bad, I don't know. I could get into that and, and talk about all the details. But that said, I don't necessarily have much to be gained um, inside the weight room because I'm so strong relative to my dunking skill that if I take too much time away from actually dunking, then I'll actually get worse at dunking because I'm not practicing trick dunks. I'm not doing behind the back. I'm not doing East Bays. I'm not doing 360s or cuffing and that's why it's really important for me to make sure that I I get a lot of reps um, of those dunks at a good high quality and if I'm lifting a lot I can't do that so that's the reason why I really haven't been pushing in the weight room um, this session and the last session you guys will probably notice that I'm going quite a bit harder the weights aren't super heavy but that's fine I'm going to build up the intensity over the next month or two the focus of this is really to to maximize how much um, hypertrophy I can get, some of the metabolic adaptations, you know, specifically when we're looking at hypertrophy, we want to see type two muscle fibers hypertrophy. So that's the reason why you always want to have high intent. But if I have high intent, then my tendons are going to get pretty painful pretty quick. So kind of balancing qualities out right now. I want to make sure I'm still jumping when I'm going through this cycle. But like I said, I'm also trying to build up as much volume as possible, um, as safely as possible. So that's why I'm in this 10 to 15 rep range. Um, these front squats were four by 15. It was super cold in the gym actually. And uh, it took a while to actually even get into that. Just mentally wasn't wasn't fully into the workout, but you know, it's the first week of the cycle. Um, I did hit all three lifts. And then I also did an upper day from my good friend Christian at Archery Strong. And uh, yeah, it was, it was good to be able to get back and push in the weight room a little bit. I've missed it. Isaiah was actually talking to me and he's like, man, I'm having FOMO for this cycle. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I also got new weightlifting shoes, like I mentioned in my last video. So if you guys like those, uh, make sure you tell me how smoking hot I look in them. Um, I was really, really excited about them. I, I love them. They, I haven't worn weightlifting shoes in a while. I give them to Isaiah actually. And my old pair I gave to Austin which I don't know where they are. <laughs> so it's been probably since 2018 since I bought a new pair of weightlifting shoes. Um, so it was definitely, definitely needed. Um, I've gotten away from it, but when I get into these heavy volume cycles or, or really trying to push up my weight room volume, I like, I like weightlifting shoes. I like to wear them. You know, I was doing 10 by four on the minute, every minute snatch. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I had a, a pretty high quality session here. I'm going to be pushing up full cleans. I'm going to be doing, you know, well, what I can in, in deep squats. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was high quality. So back to the session I did, um, I finished up the, the front squats. I only worked up to 50% on that. And then I had some hang high hips, or I guess it would be hang high pull snatches. Um, and the reason why I decided to do this is because I, I hurt my wrist probably three years ago and I can't really catch overhead. And because I'm focusing on building volume, which I usually don't do in weightlifting movements, but a lot of Olympic weightlifters will do this and I wanted to give it a try. Um, I decided to, uh, to, to give it a rip and, and keep high pulls in there. You can tell my intent got a lot higher as I started to get into the later, uh, later sets. I was pulling from the rack because uh, I can't really set up from the floor super well. But ideally, these would have been uh, from the floor and just been hang, or I guess they would have been high pulls, um, snatch high pulls. 
And so, yeah, 10 sets of four, which is a shit ton of volume. And that was, in, that was intentional. I'm working at about 50% of my power clean max. So that's actually quite a bit heavier for the snatch, like relatively speaking. So I'm probably around 60 to 70% of my power snatch max on this, which is really my full snatch max. I think I've done 189 or something like that, 190 in power snatch. So it's actually one of my, my better lifts uh, when I do it. I haven't done it in years, to be honest, but yeah, using this to, to build up volume in, in kind of a creative way, adding variety because I don't always just want to do power cleans or, or, you know, clean high pulls or anything else. I usually don't program high pulls because I don't, I don't think the intent's great, but again, the focus here is volume building. So it's not necessarily the end of the world if my intent is not super high. Um, I'm really just trying to accumulate a ton of reps, uh, which I'm, which I'm doing here. And the reason I also, because you guys are probably wondering why I actually did the snatch pull second is because I was not warm at all. In SF today, it was like, I don't even know, 45 degrees or something like that. So I actually started with the squats and because they were so light, I figured that it would kind of be a good way to warm up my legs and, uh, you know, make sure that my intent was good when I got to the, to the snatches. But the 15 front squats, I don't know if I said 10, it was 15 front squats. It was, it was brutal. Um, then I actually did four sets of 15 on the calf raises again. I don't have a seated calf raise right now, so I just did the best I could here with standing calf raises. Eventually next month, I'll probably hammer the seated calf raise because I'll be able to do it. And <laughs> I don't really have access to it super frequently. So uh, right now I'm just, you know, maximizing what I, what I can and can't do. Also, I was having a little bit of Achilles tendinopathy. So these actually have been really, really good for me because uh, hypertrophy work can increase the collagen. Um, I guess uh, it's not density, but it's the synthesis of collagen uh, basically increases. You can look up Keith Barr's research. He talks about it a lot. I think he has a lecture on YouTube if you guys are interested in that, where he goes over, you know, why hypertrophy work is so beneficial. I like to mix in slow strength and hypertrophy work. Again, because I'm not doing a lot of elastic work right now, I'm really just focusing on hypertrophy and having one session a week. That's pretty short, pretty low quality. Probably going to do it tomorrow. I thought about doing it today, but not going to happen. Um, I, I'm not really worried about, too much about my tendon. I do want to keep it conditioned because when I do come into those, you know, more ballistic movements and stuff like that, moving into, you know, May and stuff like that, I think it's going to be really, really valuable. So or it's going to be really important for me to, to stay conditioned. Also, I put a plate underneath my foot here. So that being said, um, yeah, four sets of 15 here. The calves started to burn quite a bit towards the end of this. And I actually also had um, hip thrust programmed, but I ended up not doing them. In the gym here, I, they have pads and stuff like that, but it's pretty hard to set up. Like, I don't even know. The bench is really, really high. I thought about setting up like plates and stuff like that, but at this point I had been there for, I don't even know, a little over an hour. And then with the walk down and back, it was like another half hour and there was other stuff that I wanted to do. So I decided to, to cut those out today. I, maybe I'll do them later or tomorrow when I do my upper day. We'll see. Um, I, I wrote this cycle and it is kind of in its early stages. So I could just altogether take it out. I, probably the right decision because again, the volume in this cycle is just so high. I mean, this week alone, I, I, I don't even know how many reps I've accumulated, but um, then I did some split stance or staggered stance, uh, good mornings, and that was pretty much the session. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave it in the, in the comment section below. Um, I'm so much better at responding to YouTube than anywhere else. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned. I think my vertical is really going to shoot up over the next couple months. Hopefully we'll get that first East Bay on 10 feet. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Thanks guys. Peace out.